Today on Backyard Bayou, we're taking you full circle. We're going from bait to plate, and it all starts south of the Intercoastal Waterway in Franklin, Louisiana at St. Mary's Seafood and Marina. This truly was one of the most interesting days of filming that we have ever had in the history of the series. Let's catch up with our grand tour guide for the day. This is Daniel Edgar. Daniel, thank you yes, for having us. Yes, sir, Jake. So what, what is St. Mary's Seafood? St. Mary's Seafood is basically a distributor, wholesale okay. distributor. We have boats that go out in the morning, they buy bait, gas, all their supplies, fish all day. When they come in, we buy their catch, put it on pallets, wholesale it to distributors. My dad was a commercial fisherman, fur trapper. You know, we lived, born and raised in the swamp, out in the bay in the Gulf, you know, and we fish everything from catfish to crabs, crawfish, shrimp, we shrimp, we, everything. That's our entire life. You know, and also have a bait company in Abbeville. It all, this company can't survive without bait. So I have my own bait company. Is that where we're going? Yes. We're going we're to your go bait company. Yes, we're going to go to my bait company, okay. yes, sir. And uh, that's where it all starts. It starts with bait, then the trap, then the harvest, then the transportation, then the restaurant, and then the table. Right. So we're going to do the... We're going to go full circle. We're going to go full circle, yes, sir. As we make our way to LA Seafood, Daniel tells me about their almost 200 foot long fishing boat. And I'm getting more and more excited because he tells me that the boat just made a drop off of hundreds of tons of Gulf herring, or what he calls pokey. This fish is higher in protein, higher in oil, higher in fat than any fish swimming in the Gulf of Mexico. And, and what do you use this fish for? Bait. We use, this is the bait that we use for crawfish, crabs, and catfish. The reason I started this company was there were no more bait companies in Louisiana. Louisiana, 90 to 95 percent of our bait needs we were buying from Virginia and New Jersey, from the East Coast. The last bait company we had in Louisiana closed down in 07. And Louisiana, we struggled for bait, fought over bait, little price wars trying to get bait. So you could imagine like right now, if we ran out of bait, you'd walk in a restaurant and say, I'd like three pounds of crawfish. And they say, well, we don't have any because we're out of bait. Every bank, every farm operation, every restaurant, every part of this culture depends on the success of this company. Right? You don't really think about the bait used to catch your food. Yeah, Whenever right. you're looking at the seafood on the plate, you're not really thinking about, okay, well, well, what got the seafood in the net or on the yeah, line yeah. in the first Those place? Those crawfish didn't go in that trap just because they like it in right. there. <laughs> so what you're saying is no bait, no, no plate. <laughs> no <laughs> plates. That's right. This room is one of the most critical parts of the operation here at L.A. Bait. Once the pogey or the gulf herring comes off of the bait boat, which is what they use to go out and catch these guys, they're brought here to one of these two tanks. This tank here holds a hundred tons, 50 on each side of the fish. And this is where they're individually quick frozen. And what that means is that they're put in a brine solution, which is about 22% salt water, that's super chilled down to 10 or 12 degrees. And what happens is because that brine solution will not freeze, the fish will. And because the solution doesn't freeze, they don't turn into big blocks of ice. They are actually frozen individually, which is where IQF comes from. So if we grab one of these guys, and you can tell there's a lot of them. This guy's frozen solid and it's gonna stay that way until he's pulled out. This guy right here could be catching crabs tomorrow. I think I just got put to work. This is really, really cold. These hoses are pumping the same 10 to 12 degree salt water brine. There's a reason why these guys are wearing gloves and long sleeves, and I'm not. I'm gonna give this back to you. I'm gonna go warm my hands up, because I can't feel my fingers. So Daniel's waiting right now to fulfill a request that I had. Right over here is a spout. I call it the fish shooter. I've gotta play with the toy, so we're gonna find out if we can do it. Thank <laughs> you. 
We're here at St. Mary's Molting Room, and, and this is where they take the blue crabs that come in, and this is where your soft shell crab will come from. So let's take a look. This is a blue crab right here, right in the middle of molting. You can see it's exiting its shell right here. So here's the old shell. Here's the crab coming out of the shell. You can see the difference in texture. This is really, really soft right here. As soon as this crab exits its shell, it's going to leave it behind. It looks, it looks just like a crab. Except there's nobody home. They open this up. Nobody's here. This is one that just freshly molted, probably just a couple of minutes ago. And she's probably grown about 30% in size. She's really, really soft. This may look like a, a basket of crabs. This is actually all the molts that have been pulled out of the water. So there are no crabs in this. These are just the old empty shells. This is the end result. But once they molt, we let them firm up a little bit where they can physically hold their shape pretty good. And we put them in these coolers. And every couple of days the truck comes. Sometimes he'll come every day. Sometimes if we're doing 100, 200 dozen a day, then the truck comes pretty often. It just depends how much the type of the season, the time of the year. You know? And these guys are still alive. Yeah, they're so still they'll alive. They'll stay alive for a couple of days in, the cooler? Yeah, in, a, in a cooler like this. They'll stay alive a couple of days. And that's why they like them a little firm. See this one, it's a little soft. Watch, touch this one. They took that one out a little too soon. And But the restaurants like them just a little bit leathery. They live longer, they hold up better. And they can't pinch it. No, well, no, they can't bite you. They're too soft. They're soft shells. As we continue our journey from bait to plate, now it's time to pull some crawfish out of the water. Daniel's taking us to his crawfish farms just outside of Abbeville, Louisiana. And as we turn off of the asphalt and onto the dirt road, we go down these winding trails where we do our very best not to drive into these ponds, which is where we're going to get the crawfish. This is where we find Mitch, and Mitch is going to do his very best to teach me the finer art of crawfish harvesting. Take it with your left. Put that one out. Put that one out. Ah, grab the other one. There we go. Grab the other one. Mitch, how long have you been doing this? All my life. That was five years old up here. Put us over the weight limit, so we're stuck. As I try to dry out my boots, I notice the guys are sorting the crawfish and uh, not the way that I expected. They're not sorting them by size, they're actually sorting them by color. That's a different species. They're basically a river crawfish. See, there's a male, there's a female. See the male here? He's, he's got more, he's got four. Us guys just have one, he's got four. <laughs> And here's a female, and you can see the claws. You see how his claws are a lot longer? 
than hers. The males have a lot longer claws. Do they taste any different? It tastes a little different, but if there's Tony Satra's seasoning on it, you can't rub it. <laughs> there's no White such crawfish. thing as a bad crawfish. You know, this is our passion. My son, my family, we love raising crawfish. We love fishing, love being in the swamp. My dad introduced me to the swamp when a little bitty kid, and we've never wanted to leave. Sometimes when your hands are all busted up and you have to tie a string to the bedpost to hold your hand up, so you can sleep, because if you put it down, your heart beats hurt your hand. You know, when you're really catching a lot of fish, uh, yeah, sometimes you get tired and, and you just wait for a day when it's pouring down rain or bad, bad weather, and you have an excuse to skip a day. <laughs> <laughs> but every time you skip a day, you can't make up for that money. It's gone. And you don't know about the hurricanes in the future lost days or broken motors or problems. Or it just bothers you to know that, you know, you've got crabs or fish in those nets and you need to be taking them out to catch some more. If you can raise your family, keep them out of trouble and pay the bills, that's as good as the rich guy can do. No one can do any better. You know? So it's the end of the day here at St. Mary's Seafood in Marina. We started the day, we, we found our bait, uh, we, we spent the day pulling the crawfish from the traps. Well, I see we spent the day pulling the crawfish from the traps. They spent the day pulling crawfish from the traps and I spent the day getting in the way. So now we're back here and it's time to unload the crawfish. So today's haul from, uh, from this group brought in about 50 or 60 sacks. So they get weighed and pre-graded. Uh, now it's time for us to uh, take the crawfish back to Shreveport and we're gonna show you what we can do with them. Now my favorite part is finally here. It's time for our crawfish boil. We've completed that journey from bait to plate. And even so, it's really easy to take for granted the seafood that this state provides to us. And now I believe we have a really interesting perspective on where it all comes from. Now you may think that, that when you're buying seafood, you may be contributing to a, a CEO buying his next boat, but even though this CEO is uh, buying his next boat, it's going to be one of these. It's going to be one of these fishing <laughs> boats, right? <laughs> no, you, no Bahama the, yachts? The people, the people that buy Louisiana seafood, they support a lot of families. A lot of families, local people that give their lives in bad weather, rough weather, cold weather, to produce and to supply a real good quality product. This episode is brought to you by the Louisiana Seafood Promotion and Marketing Board and Louisiana, feed your soul.